Hey everybody, Real Estate Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. I've got a story for you. I'm gonna tell you that in a second, but uh, Airbnb. Airbnb collapse going on right now. And this is, uh, it sounds funny, I was, I was uh, inspired to do this video based off of a tweet that I saw about somebody that was genuinely asking, um, talking about his situation, that he owns an Airbnb and zero, zero uh, reservations. Literally dropped to nothing. And it's been like the last month and a half and he's asking people if they have seen this anywhere they are. And other people were chiming in and telling them that he wasn't the only one. And it makes me think about videos that I did quite a while back about the Airbnb collapse I was coming. And it was going to be on the heels of, in, because of inflation. That's, it was gonna be right behind inflation rising. Because as inflation gets stronger, people start to realize, hey, I didn't get enough of a pay raise. We don't have enough money for that. Uh, ho that vacation to go on. And when it comes to Airbnbs as opposed to hotels, you know, there's a, there's a handful of benefits, right? Obviously, you can put more people in it so you can get lower cost per person there. Um, you have the freedom of being able to, uh, you know, be in like a, a neighborhood where it's quieter. There aren't people running down the halls next to you. There's all, you know, being able to cook together. There's all kinds of really neat things about Airbnbs. Now, here's the problem though. When inflation goes up, that cost per person actually changes. Uh, hotels start to look a little bit more competitive and it becomes very, a very tight market, let's say. Now, the other problem I see with Airbnbs, and it's about to get into this story I'm gonna tell you about somebody I know, is that a lot of people bought Airbnbs in the last three to four years, right? So they don't have a ton of margin when it comes to the price that increased. Yes, I know that real estate prices completely ballooned, but the problem is, is people, were using, if they bought Airbnbs back in 2018, 2019, it was like a cash cow, right? Interest rates, mortgage rates were low and there were so many bookings, right? The economy was doing well and uh, they were out there making a killing because they were, you know, probably booking it, you know, 15, 18, sometimes nights a uh, month and they were killing it. And they were using that money and they were living on that money. I know people when I was uh, working as a real estate for Remax, uh, even agents in the office that were killing it in Airbnbs and you saw big vehicles, big vacations, new home purchases, things like that. Well, they also did something else. They also started to leverage those Airbnbs to buy more of them because, hey, if it works once or twice, why won't it work 10 times? And that's how I believe when it comes to buying cash flowing real estate. But the problem is with Airbnbs, those big margins are based off of a canary, a unicorn, if you will. They're based off of the economy being good. You see, when the economy starts to downturn, people always need a place to live. And a lot of people that own Airbnbs, they always said it in the back of their mind, hey, or they even said it out loud to me, hey, worst case scenario, because I would tell them the market's gonna crash someday, I'll just rent it out permanently. Here's the problem with that. When you start with a model of high margins, you start to forget that emergency plan. And there are a lot of people that went out and over leveraged those uh, Airbnbs. They went out, pulled seconds or equity lines to go and or refinance them if the interest rate was right to cash out, pull cash out of that property to go and buy more of them, right? Getting them even to more leverage. Well, now when the world shut down in 2020, then we really, you want to talk about a unicorn, interest rates dipped even more. And then people started, they wanted to live, right? They didn't want to be, they didn't want to go to a hotel and be told they had to wear masks, they'd go straight to Airbnbs. So Airbnb market exploded and everybody was in the money for two, two and a half years. So then not only did the people that already owned Airbnbs take it to the next level, you saw a whole new different type of Airbnb investor come in and come in literally at the top. Now to say that it is not the top is an understatement. We've already passed that top and we're heading down. Well, the thing is, is that if you think about this, sure, a lot of people can go, you know, I'll turn into a long-term rental. And, I'll, I'll, and we're already seeing that because we're starting to see rents come down. The only reason rents in these large cities like San Francisco, New York, and things like that would start to come down, and they always start there. They, that spreads, that, 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 um, that cycle will spread across the country, is because now people cannot afford, you know, as they raise rents, they're like, we can't afford it. So those rentals would stay on the market for a long time and they'd start to dip down. Well, now the Airbnb uh, person that has totally leveraged all these fancy cars, houses, and things like that, and a ton of homes on the market, they try and turn those into um, rentals, they're gonna find, well, now you're going from making, let's say, $25,000 a month to $3,000 a month. You know, how's that gonna work? Where's your mortgage payment, right? 
Another thing is, there are some people that I know that have actually bought those homes on an adjustable rate mortgage, and that's gonna, that's really gonna thrill them. And I think you're going to see foreclosure, uh, and I, this has been my call for a long time, January 1st, this next year, you are gonna see foreclosure filings like you have not seen before. I think it's gonna absolutely rival 2006. Um, but now getting to the story about this guy now, this guy I know just got into real estate and he started with an Airbnb. He bought his first Airbnb, uh, I wanna say two years ago, and I was telling him, warning him, he's known me for 20 years. He actually saw me invest and sell at, no, sorry, he, he, he saw me after I just sold all the real estate. That's when we met. And he just straight up says, I don't, I don't believe you. I don't think we're in a bubble, it's different this time. And the, the pressure's on right now, you could tell. And I asked the other day, I said, how are uh, reservations? He goes, it's down. And I go, how bad? And he goes, well, it's seasonal. And I go, yeah, I get it. And he goes, but what's concerning is it's so much lower than this time last year. And I said, I actually have a reason for that. And he goes, why? I said, because the world changed. You see, you, were, you invested during a bubble when the economy was in a spot where the consumer said, I don't want to go to a hotel and wear a mask. I don't want any regulations. I want to go and cook for myself and be away. That's my vacation. I just want to get out and live. So you bought these places where you'd go back to the uh, current owner, the, the previous owner and say, hey, I want to see all your bookings. He'd show you and he showed you a bubble. So you actually bought in a bubble. So you planned on that property making it minimum X. And now you get into it and about a year later, it's making X minus two. And you're going, what in the heck is happening? And so it's interesting, you know, and, and now he's consolidating. He's selling one and looking to pay off another one. So that's great. That is a great plan for a lot of people that have multiple properties. That's the first thing I tell them. When you think the real estate market's in a dip, you start to consolidate your property. You start selling off uh, your worst performers, take the profit and put dump it into the best performers and pay them off. And then it doesn't matter what the economy does. You're good, right? You own it cash. And that's what's really, really important. You have that peace of mind. And um, so I wanted to do this video because you're starting to see these cracks in Airbnb. And not only you have a two, two-fold whammy, right? A double whammy. You've got literally the season, the fall, where everyone's going back to school, kids are going back to school, holiday season starting. So that slows down. The, it's not you know spring and summer anymore, but also you have this inflation that's raging. It's all over the news. I think that is what's really going to uh, cause fear. For p some people that don't have money, they go, well, I can't go anyway. For others that have money, they go, man, maybe it's time to bu uh, buckle our belts, you know, lock in and get ready for a wild ride. That's at least my opinion. And I think that right now, again, if you own multiple rentals, you may want to consider consolidating if you can, but here's the problem. The market's getting flooded over and over and over. Right now with new homes getting listed, there's fear starting to hit the market. It's not exactly there yet. Like I said, December, you're gonna see some peak fear in real estate sellers' uh, minds. All right, guys, that being said, I thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, this is the Real Estate Ninja. It's a totally different channel. That's not that other guy's channel. We're not gonna talk about who it is. All right, guys, that being said, the Real Estate Ninja is out.